need to introduce uh, Michael, um, but I would like to say that one of Michael's greatest uh, achievements was founding Seaford. Uh, and so uh, if you go to Wikipedia, that might not be the first entry, but here in this room, that's the first entry on your CV. He is uh, the Tully uh, Friedman Professor of Economics and Senior Fellow at the Hoover Institution, and of course he's a Senior Fellow here at uh, CEPR. He's a Research Associate of the National Bureau. Now, he had so many highlights to his career and so many honors, I'm only going to mention a couple. Uh, but uh, being Chairman of the Council of Economic Advisors, if you're into policy economics, is about as important a role as anybody can have. And he had that role from 1989 to 1993. He uh, helped uh, President-elect Reagan uh, uh, form his uh, economic policies, uh, including uh, his uh, tax policy uh, task force. Uh, I could go on about his teaching prizes, about uh, other uh, national awards that he has received, but you came to hear him talk, so I'm going to turn it over to you, Michael. I thought maybe the best thing I could do would try to give a very broad overview, this may be a little lowbrow for some of the uh, professors in the room, of what I consider to be our single most important economic problem, which is how to, uh, how to develop a strategy that is more likely to lead to sustained higher economic growth. But I want to look at what is really a very de perplexing dilemma, which is for more or less the first time, maybe since the Depression, maybe in American history, a majority of Americans say they expect their children not to be as well off, their children and grandchildren not to be as well off as they are, which is quite a remarkable thing. Now, obviously, some of that is due to the deep recession and the uh, very slow recovery, uh, but it also bodes uh, and implies a deep uneasiness about a variety of other things. But it really is, I think, really important to try to come to grips with what is likely to affect the type of economy our children and our grandchildren will inherit? Not just, be, not just for those of you who are worrying about that at the moment, uh, but it is something I think that will underpin uh, the political possibilities in economic policy for a long time to come, and I think it will heavily influence the election in 2016. I have my own views about an agenda for prosperity. I think much of this would be uh, shared by many economists, maybe not of a, a at the political extremes, but I believe we really have to, our, our primary focus must be on a comprehensive strategy that starts with rolling back some of these excesses, additional fiscal consolidation phased in gradually as the economy recovers, entitlement reform and tax reform, which maintains, now is to keep strong incentives to work, save, and invest, starting, by the way, with reducing the subsidies in those programs to well-off people like me, broaden the tax base to include more people and more economic activity. Too much economic activity escapes taxation. In Social Security, that's indexing and retirement ages. In Medicare, there are many discussions of that, but uh, that's a harder problem. I don't have time to go in depth at, but there have been a variety of suggestions. In the end, the governments can either ration health care by uh, regulation and direct rationing, as President Obama has proposed with his independent payment advisory board, or by price. I prefer the latter. I think it would be much more efficient, but that's the only way we'll be able to deal with that. Price, at least, can help elicit a supply response. Uh, the tax system, broad-based consumed income tax, and the like. The budget needs to be reformed because we need a, every successful society needs an effective government doing the things we need government to do. We need to make fiscal and monetary policy much more predictable and permanent and eliminate the endless use of temporary measures. Our human capital policy is, uh, as I said, a foundation of our economy. So education, training, and immigration reform are all high on my list. Regulation, it's about time we got a regulatory budget and some tighter uh, episode. There are some things we need to regulate. You can't have a fractional reserve banking system without some oversight. I'm cautiously optimistic. Previous crises have led people, in my opinion, to overestimate how long they'll continue. And they also lead to an environment where it's, you can make foolish policies. In a boom, everything seems affordable. 
you don't worry about its ultimate cost. So Medicare wound up costing a thousand times more than predicted. Uh, America has great advantages. The best higher education system in the world, highly productive workforce, the deepest and most liquid capital market in the world, hence the dollar remains the global reserve currency, allowing us to borrow at lower interest rates. We have the most innovative uh, companies from IT to oil and gas. We have a diverse po population that I think is more supportive of earned success and some disparity in income than uh, other, in many other places. We've had the North American energy revolution uh, that's a, a tailwind at our back. And we have far less severe demographic pressure and much less bloated welfare state than other major economies. Uh, so it won't be easy. Uh, and I'll test our political capability to do something about it. But I guess if it come to, came down to it, if we maintain a productive, um, efficient market economy, I believe our entrepreneurs and our workers and our businesses and our comp competitive juices will generate substantial economic growth in the future, maybe not quite as high as in the past with slower growth of the labor force. But we can have a much stronger economy and an economy that is very strong for our children and grandchildren. I don't want to just be uh, simplistic and say, well, it will just occur, but our best chance of having the kinds of new products generated from our uh, research and our, uh, and our technology that enable a much stronger economy, help us be, lead better lives and our children and grandchildren better lives, depend heavily on maintaining strong incentives in our economy. And again, my view of America is not far from Winston Churchill's, which is you can always trust Americans, America to do what's right after it's exhausted all the alternatives. So thank you very much.